Hello there, it's Joe the CRM Chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are building solutions on top of or who are indeed extending out the Power Platform. So today we're going to be taking a look at Power Apps and specifically model driven apps, what they are, what you need to know about them and how you can actually build one out from start to finish. So it's really important that you grapple this topic as part of the exam itself. Um, so, mo so model driven apps are typically used when you've got a sort of data driven application that's sitting on top of Microsoft Dataverse. It gives you a quick and easy way of being able to build out the various different types of forms, views and visualizations that your application is going to need uh, for your particular purpose. So to get started, first of all, you can see I'm in the Maker portal up here. We're going to go down to Solutions. We're going to go into the solution that we built out within the previous videos in the series. Uh, I'm just going to click on New at the top up here, and then I'm going to go to App, and we'll see we've got an option here for Model Driven App. If we click on that, it's going to open up the Model Driven App Designer window for us, so we can start building out our app for the first time. So a few details we need, details we need to provide when building out our app for the first time. So we're just going to call this our PL400 uh, Sample App. We can give it a description if we want. Uh, if we've uploaded an image uh, into the application as a web resource, we can use that as the default image. And what we can also do, because we're using an existing solution, we can actually base our model-driven app off the components that are in there already. So I'm just going to click, tick the box down here in, in order to do that. There's a few other options as well that I can select around, okay, enable it for mobile offline, add in a welcome page if we wanted to, but we're just going to disregard those for today. Click on Next. Uh, it's going to ask us now to select a solution from the list that we've got in our particular environment. So I'm just going to select PL400 Demo Solution up here. Uh, there's no sitemap configured for this, but that's fine. We're going to do that as part of the video today. So all I'm going to do now is click on Done. And it's going to build out the sort of skeleton for the app straight away. So we can see we've it's got a few different options that we can work with on here. We can add on, for example, our various different uh, tables or entities as they're sometimes referred to. We can add on business process flows. We're going to cover those off in a future video. Dashboards as an example. And we can see at the top up here, we've got a red warning flag that indicates our, a configuration is missing for our app. So all model-driven apps need to have a sitemap defined for it. And what that allows us to do is uh, provide a navigation experience for our users so they can select the various different tables, various different um, elements of our app, maybe even go off to external apps if we wanted to. All of this can be achieved by the sitemap. So we're just going to click on the edit button up there. And we can see in here we can actually start building out our particular sitemap. So it's all based on this concept of having separate areas, groups within that, and then sub areas, which then goes off and does uh, the bit that we wanted to do. So we're just going to make some tweaks to this up here. I'm just going to call this um, my uh, sample area up here. As we type it in, we can see that things are getting updated. I'm going to call this uh, sort of my first group down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in one of the tables that our app is working with. So in this case, we're just going to do select entity down here. You can see we've got a few different options on here for maybe a web resource or a dashboard if you wanted. Uh, and I'm just going to select the account table down there. Um, and because we're not calling um, accounts, accounts in our particular case, I can actually override this as well, the name of it. So I can call this maybe, let's say, companies instead, just to make things a bit more bespoke for my needs. So typically, that you'd have a more complex sitemap for this. For the purposes of today's video, this is just going to be sufficient. So I'm just going to click on Save and Close to take us out of that. We can see that red warning flag goes straight away and now we can start to actually um, build out some other elements of our app. So as an example, we can actually um, build out the various different forms in our particular app. So we can see at the moment that the account form is selected by default, the main account form. If I click on the pencil icon over here, I can actually open up the form designer and this lets us then start to build out um, our particular form. We can add on various different elements, whether new fields or components or controls if we so choose. Um, so this form on here is probably looking fairly good. We get a nice little sort of WYSIWYG type view that we can use to sort of um, see how it actually renders for users. And what we're going to say is, okay, we're just going to make some small amends here. I'm just going to remove the ticker symbol because we're not particularly concerned about that for our own purposes. And I'm going to add in a new field. I'm going to add in, let's say, uh, account number. We want to have sort of short codes for our particular account. So we're going to add that in because I think that's particularly useful. If we wanted to, we could add on additional tabs to our particular form. Uh, we can do this by sort of just um, clicking on the one column 
um, tab at the top up here we can see we get a brand new tab added on we can then add on various different sections we can customize the header or the footer if we wanted to um, from a developer's standpoint if we were working with um, maybe JavaScript form functions and things like that um, at the time of recording this uh, we can't do this within the new form experience so what we'd have to do is we'd have to click on switch to classic at the top up here that would then take us out to the new uh, to the classic experience where we could do that um, we'll be covering that off in a future video in terms of how to do that so we won't necessarily cover that today so at this point I'm just going to click on save to get that all saved we're happy with the form we think it's ready to go And we're just also going to give it a quick publish just to make sure the latest customizations are applied. It's always best just to make sure you do that before or uh, well, just after making any changes to any component in, in Microsoft Dataverse. Okay, so we can close that down now. The next thing we want to have a look at is views. Okay, so we want to actually set up a particular view for our um, for our um, for our model driven app. So to do this I can click on create new at the top up here. Uh, we just want to click on save just to make sure that our latest changes are captured. And similar to before we get a view designer window on here where we can use to build out our particular view. So I'm just going to call this a my accounts view. Uh, if I wanted to I can add on some additional attributes that we're most interested in. So maybe again our account number is of interest. Maybe we want to add on, let's say, business type as well. Um, there's various different things that we can do here, but the main thing we want to actually add on is a filter criteria. So I want to add on a filter that sort of says, okay, where the account owner, if I can find the owner field, uh, equals current user. So that way the view will only display data based on uh, the filter criteria that we define. So I'm gonna click on save and close down there. Click on views again. We should be able to see uh, the new My Accounts view down there. Uh, and we're just going to select that as just the single view for our particular app. Another component we can configure is charts. So we can see we get a few different charts out of the box. Um, so we're just going to go in and just say, okay, we're going to select our accounts by owner chart. And we're just going to go into the editor experience on here just to see what options we get in here. This is going to take us out into the classic view in order to customize this further. So just give it a second to load. So similar to what we see before, we get a sort of visual representation of the of the data in there. There's no data in this system, so it's probably not going to show us anything on here. And we've got a few different options that we can configure. So at the moment, uh, we can see that this is going to be uh, showing us sort of account names, account of all the account names based on their particular owner. If we wanted to maybe uh, tweak this about maybe, so again, maybe okay, our account number is the one that's most interest. As we update things down here, if there's data in the system that can be rendered, we'll see this update accordingly. In our case, there's no data in here, so there's nothing we can do. Um, we can tweak around with this dashboard uh, to this particular chart to our heart's content. We can also maybe change its type, so we get a few different options on here, column, bar, area. We can have maybe a pie or a funnel chart. Uh, all of these are configurable and can be added onto our particular model-driven app. Um, so really, it's just a case of just customizing this to suit your particular needs. So we'll just click on Save and Close to get rid of that. And the final thing we want to do is actually just configure a dashboard for our app, and then we're going to add that onto our sitemap as well so that it's accessible. So if we click on uh, All Dashboards up here, I'm going to click on Create New. Uh, we're going to go for a classic dashboard as the one that we want. When we create this for the first time, we get a few different options at our disposal. So we can see maybe we can have a two column regular dashboard, a three column overview dashboard. Uh, that's the one we're going to go with actually. So we'll click on that, go to create. Give this a dashboard a name, so we'll just call this our PL400 dashboard. And we can add various different components to our particular dashboard. So it could be that maybe we want to add on, let's say, um, maybe one of one of the charts that we just customized a second ago. So whether that, that will be our accounts by owner chart we want to add on. Click add over there. We want to maybe add on the list of data that we created a short while ago. So my accounts as an example. If we wanted to as well, there could be other components that we add on. So in this case, uh, we're using the relationship assistant 
um, we can add that on down there and then finally down there we could have maybe let's say an iframe um, so maybe we've got an external application we want to sort of show we can maybe just add the details in down there I won't actually do this today we'll just sort of leave that blank for now so if we click on save and then close that dashboard down we're now going to add this onto our model driven app as a, as a sort of a component we can navigate to I'll just save that now click on the pencil icon on the, on the site map and then we're just going to do um, select the group that we've got here I'm just going to drag on a new uh, sub area at the top up here and we'll just call this uh, my dashboard and then if we scroll down to here we should be able to see in the list down here our PL400 dashboard that we can select save and close that I'm just going to make sure I've selected just the uh, PL400 dashboard for this app like so click on save and now we can actually give our app a bit of a test drive if you wanted to so I'm just going to click on publish first of all um, we can also run the validate command up here um, so if there are any potential issues or things that maybe we need to check with our app we can actually click on that and it'll sort of show us so for example we can see that permit type doesn't have doesn't reference a form or view so that means that basically they're going to see everything um, so this can be quite useful just to basically flag up some minor issues but we're not too concerned about that today what we're now going to do is actually going to give this a test drive using the play, play button at the top up here. It'll open up our app into a separate tab. We can see straight away we get some of our, um, our dashboard loading up. Um, obviously there's no data in the system so it's a little bit empty at the moment. If we click on companies down here we can actually go down onto here. We can see the views that are enabled for the particular app. If we go in here we can see the form that we created is on there. So I'm just going to call this maybe Contoso. Um, save and close that and then we go back to the dashboard we can see straight away we've got the uh, data shown up on here so this is a very basic simple app it doesn't really showcase perhaps all of the capabilities that you can do an app can be sort of you know relatively small or relatively large in terms of what it's doing uh, what the app designer lets us do is customize this in a very efficient way so as you can see in less than 10 minutes we've built out a fully working application business application that we can start to use and that's really great news we've not had to resort to custom code we've not had to go through a lengthy development cycle to sort of do that you know we've got something that just works straight away which is excellent so that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. So I hope you found this useful as part of your revision for the exam. Uh, be sure to check out the other videos in this particular series um, where we're going to be where we cover topics such as uh, working with Microsoft Dataverse, um, you know, extracted solutions using Azure, Azure DevOps. Uh, there'll also be future videos covering other topics as well. So it'd be great to have you along for the ride. Uh, all it leaves me to say now is have a great day ahead and take care. Cheers.